Yo, Callie, what's good, brother? Doing a little special interview on mental health, of course. How are you doing? Yeah, today? man, I'm awesome. Man. Well, you know what? I say I'm awesome because I want to be awesome. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm up and down, man, just like everybody else. You know, I've been going through some stuff lately, but I don't want to say that because then it makes me feel like, oh, I'm really, you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, I, I guess if um, we're talking about mental health today, you know, I have to be real. And then I have to talk about like, you know, how I get through it. And I do it with music a lot. I know that sounds like a cliche, but I do it with music a lot, man. Um, it, it really, it's a distraction. And it's also therapeutic for me to get thoughts out. Like, you know, like what you did. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, you know, one of the things I think for anyone, but also especially people that suffer from any type of mental illness is like, I feel like expression is so important, right? Like just not having it inside, like whatever it is, you just have to let it out. You know, like, in the video, I was acting kind of wild and shaking around and like all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's like, cool, like just let that energy out. You know, that's kind of the, like you were saying, you have to be honest. And if you feel a certain way, if you have a thing that you can safely let that energy out, you know, it's it's like a blessing. That's probably therapeutic, man, even to get on there and, and, and scream and gyrate around a bit. Um, <laughs> I used to follow this guy named Elliot Hulse, mm -hmm. um, yo Elliot on YouTube. And he was like, um, talked about you know being able to get everybody out of the house and just punch the bed um mm -hmm. i did one better i bought a punching bag recently like a big heavy bag nice and i want i haven't done it yet but i want everybody to leave the house so i can just punch this bag and scream i just want to I, punch it screamed at the top of my lungs and, the horse and really just get it out because i've never been able to actually do that because we need to be able to get some of this energy out and uh um you know stimulate our sympathetic nervous system and you know because i want to do that and i meditate so i want to add that to the meditation to get my nervous system uh you know going in the right direction man 100 percent. well i'll tell you a funny story about screaming i had a friend in high school I, I think i've told you this right i went to military school and um we would sneak out of the barracks <laughs> at five in the morning our senior year because we were you know what I mean? We're a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of outliers. We'd run over to the field and just scream. <laughs> and we would just, we would just do it in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. No one could hear us. And like, it was, it was kind of liberating, you know, it was like an energy that you just like had like stuck inside of you and you just let it yeah. out. Um, you know, I mean, you've done some like kind of metal influence records, haven't you? I feel like I've heard. Of some, course. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've heard some, like some roars in some of those records. Um, oh Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, I actually just did one. I just did this song for EA Sports um, that I just turned into, I turned it into them to death. I actually did two songs and I did two, I've done four songs all together. I just turned it in today and I was screaming on it, man. I was screaming on it. And um, uh, that I did a song for uh, this song called David Makes Man, which Oprah mm -hmm. Winfrey and Michael B. Jordan put out on wow. HBO. Congrats. And um, I screamed on that and it was really therapeutic. It was talking about, how um it's called um even me and i'm nice. like nobody makes it out alive not <laughs> even not even not even me you know what That's i'm saying it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah it was really crazy man and um you know i was saying that you know everybody the whole song is about just having we only got one shot on this earth yes sir and we need to do whatever it is we want to do but in the meantime sometimes we need this screen therapy totally. and so um that song was part of that therapy. 100%. I mean, it's, it seems so simple, but it's so true, right? Like it's, it's, you know, you have these moments where it could be, you know, for me, it took a lot of therapy to even talk about, um, you know, a lot of stuff that I talked about on like the one. Um, and then when I did finally pin it, right, like I just felt almost like healed for it. Like I felt comfortable to finally talk about my experience in the psych ward, which a lot of people have experienced. A lot of people I never would have thought to have come up to me and been like, oh, I've, that's happened to me too. And I'm like, really? I you started know? to go so many times. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I didn't. Um, I've started to check myself in a number of times. Mm -hmm. The only reason I think I didn't because I didn't know what they were gonna do. I'm like, are they just yeah, gonna right? medicate me? Mm -hmm. Are they just gonna medicate me? Are they gonna chain me to a wall? Like, oh. what is this play? What happened? Very 1980s. So I don't think we have to worry. Right. About that I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't know if you ever seen Cheech and Chong movies where he's like in a straight jacket. He's like, my balls itch, man. 
I was yeah, like, I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna be. That's gonna be me. Like, I need to scratch my balls. hundred percent. I didn't know. What, <laughs> and I'm like this, and I can't. You know, I just. You know, we have all these images just from TV mm-hmm. about what it's, it you is know, it's, to it's go. It's funny you say straight jacket, right? Because I I brought this up. I made a very conscious decision not to put one in the video because I was terrified when I saw someone, I did see someone in it in a holding cell. And I was just like, whoa, you know, just, and, and maybe it was for their own safety. Maybe there was a medical reason, yeah, right? We like, take that lightly though. We put it in videos and movies mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, I know tech had a uh, album cover where you got one of those. And it's but, like, you know, the, he, it's like, he and you guys are such champions for mental health. We are. And you're such, um, one of my favorite words, you're such iconoclast, right? Like you guys break and destroy images. You're not, you know, by any means traditional. And so, you know, for me, I wasn't comfortable. You know, some people are, and I, I totally respect that. And I can understand that, but you know, it, it was just too real, too fresh. Cause like when they, um, so when I was in the holding cell and I was, you know, after the wellness thing, there was no beds in that actual hospital. So I had to get sent to another one. And I did get moved in a strapped ambulance um, at like one in the morning and I had no clue where I was going and I had no idea what was going on. And it's in New York city. You know what I'm saying? And so like after that experience, I was just like, yeah, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I don't, I don't want to be strapped to anything unless if it's a plane and a seatbelt, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, even then, like, I understand it would be for safety I can understand that the the doctor and the ER people didn't know me. So even though I said I would be fine in a different situation, there could have been a manic episode. And it's, you know, it's it's for both people's safety. And it's, it's a really hard thing to swallow. And I think that's part of like, you know, maybe, you know, your take on this, like mental health in general is like, you really have to look at it as whatever reality it may be there's not only you, but it affects others, you know, and like some sort of balance always has to be made. Um, you know, just because the issues can be very real. Yeah, man. It's so, um, it's such a personal thing, right? It's weird that everybody, there's millions of people, not everybody, but millions of people suffer from this thing. Yeah. Have very similar, um, behaviors and symptoms and so they're able to classify, well, it's bipolar or it's mm-hmm. schizophrenia or it's, the, mm-hmm. you know, where really it's all this individual stuff. Totally. You totally. know what I'm saying? Like I've been diagnosed by bipolar, mm-hmm. but I took anti-psychotic medication, mm-hmm. anti-schizophrenic medication. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, but I thought I was bipolar. There's not a bipolar medication. It was just like, we're just, it was, everybody was practicing. I had, I had, I had the same exact, uh, you know, experience when I was in the hospital, I was lucky that I did end up on a medicine that seemed so far has been working, which was Depakote. Right. But when they gave me lithium, um, I was allergic, man. I broke out in hives and it took me three days to convince. I took lithium before. Dude, yeah, I, took, I took lithium. I took Depakote. I, I was telling you the other day that I got a lyric. I said, I need devil coat just to cope. So I keep throwing these pills down my throat. Yeah, yeah, dysfunctional yeah. blunts to do. Smoking mm-hmm. Bombay can give me feng shui, but I wish that it all would go away. You know no, what I'm saying? hundred percent. And it's, it's, it's actually really cool to hear you talk about that because, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but when I was in rehab last year, um, I remember getting a text from you and someone saw that and they were like, Chris Calico. And I was like, yeah, Chris, they're my big bro. Da, da, da. And he was, yeah, he was sure. like, he was like, um, you know, he suffered from, uh, he, he was schizophrenic, right? And he suffered from a lot of stuff. And, you know, he loved your music when he was telling me about it, because you talked about so many things that no one else talked about. And he felt, you know, in the way supported, but also felt less othered because someone was talking about them. And that's something I was mentioning to you about the Depakote because I was like, has anyone ever mentioned Depakote? And you go, I have. And I was just like, that's sick. <laughs> you know, because there's, there are millions of people that are dealing with this and they just don't, there needs to be more of an open conversation, you know, for, and who knows what works for who, because it is, like you said, it's so individual. Some people, complete holistic is like the move. Some people, you know, they have different situations with their, their body and they need medication. I have a friend that has PTSD that has tremors and, you know, he needs to be on 
like a Xanax type of thing to help with his physical tremors. Um, and it just, you know, it just, I think it just depends. Like you were saying, it is, it is an individual journey. It it seems how we can, how I would describe this is it seems so unfair. Sure. Why me? That's why I I call that too. Why, Mm -hmm. why do I have to go through this? Like, you know, I want a normal life. Like even now, like I have such a histamine response to various foods. Like I just want a burger and fries tonight or some pizza. Mm-hmm. And I can't uh, eat that, you know, um, because it will give me uh, um, an episode of one in my body. It'll give me a, a, a less than desirable episode. And then, you know, to make my heart palpitate really hard. And then it makes me go into like a uh, manic state for like three days. Sure. I mean, I feel Just like for me, the it, cheeseburger. Um, sure. I mean, that's great. That's 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 I mean that's that's tough man because like it's hard for me to imagine not being able to eat what i want you know and i can't and it's like it feels like prison sure the good thing about it is that i find Mm -hmm. ways Mm -hmm. out of this i find coping mechanisms to just stay alive just to make it through friday 100 just to you know i mean um you know we get off of here i'm going to meditate because i'm going to be talking about this so much that it kind of brings yeah. it up totally and so then i gotta go okay hold on let me take a time out mm-hmm. before i go back downstairs with everybody and watch a movie because otherwise i won't be able to get off of it while we're watching the movie you know 100 percent. and so you know before we dive into a loop i think that the that's such a good point right because we do we all loop when you start to when you start to get that stuff brings up and i was talking to someone about some of the really negative experiences that I had the war that I'm not going to really get into right now, but like, it like brought it all back up. And he was like, yo, you're like pissed right now. And I was like, oh yeah, man, that's, you know, and I had to, I had to calm down. It, it is a really real thing to re-trigger yourself. And a lot of people don't realize that. And I think that's a really great point that you're making right now. So mm-hmm. I think let's end it on a positive note on a, on a, you know, a sum up in a sense. And, you know, I guess I've got two things to say with that one, Thank you, Chris, for, you know, guidance and everything with the mental health stuff personally. And, you know, it's been, it's been awesome. And two, you know, thank you for your energy on the record. Um, because I yeah. know that somewhere, even if it's one kid, it's going to help them. And to me, that's really special. And I know you've been doing that your whole career. So thank you for, you know, allowing me to step in that ring with you. Um, yeah, man. You, Selfishly, you know, I-, I was doing it to help me. Sure. Coincidentally. Sure byproduct of that is just starting helping other people Mm -hmm. i was like oh this is a thing yeah yeah that's and (laughs) um like people are like oh this dude goes through that so Mm -hmm. i think i'll be okay you know and he seems to be okay you know and so yeah man it's only i appreciate the um i appreciate you being thankful for it but i don't have a choice of course and And i feel don't do it i don't help me if I don't help me, I don't help you. And if, exactly. if we don't help other people, right? We don't create this music like this. Well, I completely agree with that because I mean, you know this with me as well. You know, rap is therapy, and it's something where, you know, I had to write that record, right? Um, and and you had to write a lot of those records. You had to write all those records, actually. And so, you know, we'll just call this a uh, part one for you know whenever we dive back into another mental health convo. But I think this will be some cool energy for people. And other than that, bro, your house, baby. Let's go. <laughs> house. Your house. And shout out Odyssey too, man. Love to so, see So Odyssey, baby. Yeah, of course. All right, Callie. Peace. Peace.